what's good rookies bass drop keys your friendly neighborhood negro and a rookie mycologist in today's video i'm going to be doing agar to agar and agar to grain transfers for the first time but before we get into that let me give you a quick little recap to show you how we got to where we are today so on march the 25th is when i did the first flush on the north spore grow in that video you saw this monster looking mushroom right here also in that video i showed you guys how to clone a mushroom you can see the footage right here it's really easy to do so in this video you're going to see what the next steps are after you clone your mushroom also right here guys i do want to let you know where i got all my information about cloning and about agar and that came from philly golden teacher now if you're in the mushroom space the mushroom community then you probably already know about philly golden teacher as you can see he has a big successful channel for anybody that's new to growing mushrooms like me there's a lot of great information on exactly how to do everything that i'm talking about in today's video and a lot more on philly golden teacher's channel so if you haven't watched any of his content go over to his channel and check it out also i want to thank philly golden teacher for showing me so much love i really appreciate it all right so now it's 12 days later april the 6th let's take a look at how the clones look now you can see the great mycelium growth that we're getting. Everything's looking healthy and beautiful. Now, the next date that I'm about to show you is from April the 13th. That's the day that I made a mistake. I'm going to show it to you and then I'll talk about it on the back end. So you can see that we have some mycelium growth right here. It's real wispy, but there's no contamination in there. And then this one right here, man, is growing rapidly. Look how great this is. I think I'm probably going to take some transfers from this one and inoculate some other cups. Oh no, look at this. So this one's contaminated. You can see the coloration on that is just crazy. Oh, and this one's contaminated as well. So I'm glad I took four. You see, I took four of them. Two of them are fine. Two of them are contaminated. We'll throw those out. But just giving you guys a little update. All right, so what you guys just watched was an Instagram reel from my rookie mycologist Instagram. Make sure you guys come follow me. But like I was saying, in the footage that you just saw, I made a mistake. I said that those last two cups had contamination and that wasn't the case. The discoloration that you see inside the cup, all that is is the mycelium degrading the dye that's inside the agar. So I made a mistake and threw those two cups away. You guys know I'm brand new to all this stuff. And by me talking to a couple people and doing my own research, I found out that these two cups was not contaminated. So the reason why I want to show you guys this is if you see this in the future, then you know that it's not contamination. So it's not a big deal that I messed it up because all that happened was I threw those two cups away, but I still have two cups going and I'll be able to replace them by doing agar to agar transfers, which you'll see later in this video. All right, so now we fast forward another six days. It's now April the 22nd, and you can see that the mycelium growth has taken over the entire cup, but also you can see that discoloration that we were just talking about. We now know that that's not contamination, so I need to get ready to do the transfers. Let's do it. All right, guys, so we fast forward again. It is now May the 1st or today. As always, you guys know I sprayed my gloves with the 70% iso alcohol. Also sprayed the table and wiped it down and the top of these lids on the jars. Now, the first thing that you guys are probably noticing is I'm not in a steel air box anymore. Now I'm in front of a flow hood. This is a four by two inoculate the world flow hood. And if you guys are in the market for a flow hood, I recommend you getting it from Inoculate the World. They have different sizes available from small ones to big ones. This is a bigger one, a four by two. I will be doing a dedicated video on the flow hood. Also, you'll see the flow hood again in the video that I'm doing about my entire mushroom setup. The steel air box did work great for me, but it's hard to see what you're doing whenever you're doing stuff inside the steel air box. Also, it's hard for me to get you guys 
great looking footage. And as a content creator, that's very important. So what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna do an agar to agar transfer. And basically all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a small piece of agar that's already been colonized with the mycelium. And I'm gonna put it in a brand new cup of agar. And by the way, I did not make this agar myself. I bought this off of Etsy. Also the grain jars that you guys see, I also bought those from Etsy as well. But to do the transfer, it's really easy. The top of the lid on the cup, you just wanna crack it so that it's easy to put the mycelium coated agar inside of here. The first thing that I did with my scalpel before I use it is you guys saw me flame sterilize it. That's very important. You just wanna cut a little piece out, open up your new cup, put it in the middle there and close it up. Now, if you've never seen agar before, most of the time you're gonna see it either in a Petri dish or in these kind of ketchup cups. I actually bought some agar in Petri dishes and I bought some in these little ketchup cups because I seen Philly Golden Teacher. He uses these little cups and by using both of them, it's way easier for me just to use these cups. Also, if you use the Petri dishes, you gotta buy some parafilm as well to wrap around it so that way no bacteria or anything gets in there. With these cups, you don't have to do that. You can just open it up like you see, put whatever you need to inside of there and close it back up. And make sure that you flame sterilize your scalpel in between each use. Now, as far as the grain jars, I just told you that I bought these on Etsy. I didn't make them myself. You can see that they do have the self-healing injection port on the lid. So you can, if you have a spore syringe or a liquid culture syringe, you can inoculate the jar. But the reason I got the jars is because I didn't want to have to cut open a grain bag and then throw it in there and seal it back up. To me, it was just a lot easier just to buy the grain jars with the lids on it, open up the lid, put some of the agar inside of here and close it back up. On Philly Golden Teacher's video, he did one cup per jar. And then on some jars, he actually did two cups per jar, but his jars was bigger than mine. So I'm gonna use this one cup and I'm gonna do two jars with it. So I just cut it in the wedges. I was trying to just open up the lid and pour it in there, but it wouldn't come out like that. So I actually had to take my scalpel and actually help it come out. Normally you wanna limit the amount of time that you have the lid off because you don't wanna chance any bacteria or contamination getting inside of there. But because we're in front of the flow hood, I think we'll be okay. Also, I didn't mention it before, but I did shake up the grain in the jar before I actually did this, just to make sure it wasn't any clumps in there. And then after I got the agar inside of there, I shook it up again, so that way we'll create more inoculation points. The more inoculation points that we can create inside the jar, the faster it's gonna colonize. That's how easy it is to do agar to agar transfers and to do agar to grain transfers. One thing I didn't mention in the video that I wanted to make sure that I mentioned was if you have some mycelium growth inside your cup and you start seeing some contamination inside of there, you can also transfer some of the good mycelium into another cup and keep it going. Earlier in the video, when I thought I had contamination, I just threw the cups away. But I want you guys to know that you can transfer healthy mycelium out of a cup that has contamination, put it in another cup and keep it going. Also real quickly here guys, I do wanna mention that I have set up the Discord server. There's nobody in there right now but me because I haven't given out the information. If you guys wanna join the Discord, I will put the link in the description. I'm brand new to Discord, but I am going through free courses on YouTube so that way I can learn everything. But I think there's enough up right now that we can go ahead and get started. So for anybody who don't want to join or don't want to pay to be in the Discord server, that's fine. All the information and all the videos will be right here on the channel. Like always, nothing's going to change. The only thing that's changing is if you want to be a part of the community, that way you can share your own videos, pictures, GIFs, thoughts. People can talk back and forth. You guys won't have to worry about just asking me for help because I'm new to growing mushrooms. There'll be other people in there that can help as well. The name of the server is called Shrooms and Trees, and I hope to see you guys in there. I will be doing a dedicated video for the Discord, but since I got everything set up last night and early this morning, I figured I would mention it in this video as well. If you wanna know where to get the spores from, come over to my Instagram account, the Rookie Mycologist Instagram account, click on the Linktree link in my bio, and you'll see my recommendation 
on where you should get your spores from. But guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. If you wanna support me and the channel, come over to therookiemycologist.com. I have some great merch on the site that everybody is loving. I wanna thank everybody that's already put in your orders. So if you're looking for a hoodie, t-shirt, slides, stickers, we have a lot of great merch on the site. I really appreciate all of you. And until I see you guys the next time, I'm out guys. Much love. Rookie out.